Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramnaya. Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful treat we had this morning. And it was flawless performance by all the children. And it was beautifully coordinated and compared by Rishi Manoharan. Friends, can we say that today is probably the birth of Ramana Balakendra? Uh, and this will be a, a new movement in Bhagwan's glory. I want to uh, uh, conclude this beautiful uh, fun functions uh, conclusion by thanking all the organizers, the Satsang Group in Connecticut for conducting this every Memorial Day for the past 12 years. Today, thanks, I thank the technical team, both in Connecticut and back home in Sri Ramanashama for the flawless uh, transmission of the program. And of course, the children, the, the performers, they really, their performance probably illustrated that Bhagavan's grace is uh, truly alive. Friends, what is grace? According to the traditional Dwaitic knowledge, grace means free, unmerited favor of God and bestowal of blessings. Thus, people, especially early on in their spiritual life, mistake grace to mean constant answering of one's prayers and fulfillment of wants. However, sorry to burst the bubble, grace is not like an automatic ATM transaction. For spiritual seekers, especially on the path of Advaita as illuminated by Sri Bhagavan, grace has a different and deeper meaning, which one it begins to understand as one goes along in on one's life journey. As Bhagwan explains, quote, your prayer is answered today. Tomorrow it won't be answered. Does it mean that God is useless? Does it mean that he listens to your prayers occasionally? In this re respect, remember, he knows what is best for you? Grace is something that is bestowed on you so that you never have to go and pray to God in order to ask for anything. Adi Shankara advises that we should pray to someone who has infinite resources but has no desire. That is God. But what should one pray for? He says we should pray for attaining the same desireless, desirelessness state as that of God. Bhagavan says there is one thing that Arunachala bestows on his devotees and that is a state where you never ask for anything you accept everything as his grace. In the Puranas, Lord Narasimha asked Prahlad to ask for a boon. The boy's, boy constantly refuses. On insistence of the Lord, Pralada says, Lord, if you insist on me asking for something, I will ask for this. Please give me the state of mind that will not ask for anything. Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.56, explains this state of mind. Quote, one who is not upset by sorrow, one who is not affected by pleasure, one who is, not, who is unaffected by anger or fear or desire. In this state, even if people accuse you wrongly, 
or praise you justly, you remain the same. You do not lose your patience or become angry or overly attached to the temporary conflicting emotions or get attached to a desire for things you think which will make you happy. Nobody in this world can be without problems. But you can pray for and obtain by his grace the state of mind wherein one views pleasures and pains alike. For the state of a peace of mind that will make you accept both the extremes with equipoise. And friends, this is the true sign of grace. Attaining this state, also called Sita Pragya, is only possible by correct knowledge, that is jnana, and requires effort, extreme effort, but more importantly, grace. Thus Bhagavan said, jnana is given neither from outside nor from another person. It can be realized by each and every one in his heart. The grace of Guru is only that self-awareness that is one's own true nature. It is the inner consciousness by which he is unceasingly revealing his existence. This divine instruction is going on naturally in everyone. I will read some question and answers between devotees and Bhagavan, which clarifies more light on this very important topic, which is grace. Devotee, is not grace the gift of the Guru? Bhagavan, God, grace and Guru are all synonymous and also eternal and imminent. It is, is not the self already within? Devotee, what is Guru's grace? How does it lead to self-realization? Bhagavan, Guru is a self. Sometimes in his life, a man becomes dissatisfied with it and not content with what he has. He seeks the satisfaction of desires through prayer to God. His mind is gradually purified until he longs to know God more to obtain his grace than to satisfy his worldly desires. Then God's grace begins to manifest. God takes the form of a guru and appears to the devotee, teaches him the truth, moreover purifies his mind by association. The devotee's mind gains strength and is then able to turn inward. By meditation, it is further purified and it remains still without the least ripple. That calm expanse is the self. The Guru is both external and internal. From the exterior, he gives a push to the mind to turn it inward. From the interior, he pulls the mind towards the self and helps in the quieting of the mind. That is Guru's grace. There is no difference between God, Guru and the Self. Devotee, how can I obtain grace? Bhagavan, grace is a Self. That also is not to be acquired. You only need to know that it exists. The sun is brightness itself. It does not see darkness, yet you speak of darkness fleeing on the sun's approach. So also is the devotee's ignorance, like the phantom of darkness, which vanishes on the look of the Guru. You are surrounded by sunlight, yet if you would see the sun, you must turn to its direction, in its direction, and look at it. So also grace is found by the proper approach you make though it is here and now. Grace is always present. 
you imagine it as something high in the sky far away something that has to descend it is really inside you in your heart when the mind rests in its source grace rushes forth sprouting as from a spring within you friends the grace of the guru is like an ocean nay it's more than an ocean it is limitless when one devotee compared bhagwan's grace like an ocean like the tamil word is samudram bhagwan said samudram kum ellai undu oi grace is unbounded it is ever present all pervading i'll read from stray verses from guruvacha kovai which uh, solidifies the concept verse 965 if one if towards the lord you take one single step then with much more than a mother's love he takes nine steps towards you to accept you such is the guru's grace next 967 mind inward turned and ego dead there shines the self the being awareness and though transcending form and feature appears as guru thus does god the self bestow as guru his grace verse 968 the heart of one who has experienced such grace now shines as pure true being since the ego not twix spirit and matter which caused delusion and confusion has been destroyed beyond revival verse 969 we are surrounded on all sides by the nectarous flood of grace and yet we suffer from delusion like some fool standing in the midst of mighty ganga ganges a fire with thirst and not knowing how to quench it 970 why should god's glance of grace which falls on all alike seem to avoid some sinners the universal eye avoids no creature we are blind for we look outward not with it so friends today let us pray for bhagwan's grace to be on all of us on his devotees on his future devotees or on people who never know about him for he is like the sun om namo bhagavate shri ramanaya